This Jack Ryan postcard comes to us from Sean over there in Canada. Any thoughts on the Jack Ryan movies? The Death of Sam... Spoiler alert. <laughs> That's on Sean. It's not on me. I'm just reading. The Death of Sam Neill's character remains a tragedy. He never got to see Montana. Thanks as ever for The Basement. Have you seen the Jack Ryan movies? I have not. I me can't either. talk about it. We have a envelope here from Aaron in Hell's Kitchen. And he's got the correct P.O. box this time. Thank you, Aaron. Great job. Ah, uh, this is a pile of postcards. Ooh. A trip down to the Philadelphia Museum of Art brings us a round four of Name the Artist. Do you know art? <laughs> Not well. Okay. Well, let's see if you can name these artists. Here's an easy one. Uh, is that Van Gogh? That is Van Gogh. Nice. Okay, this is Little Dancer, aged 14. No idea. Digga. Digga. You know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read some of these. I'm Great. Not gonna, we're not gonna play the guessing game. <laughs> this is Jose Diego Maria Rivera. Oh. With that painting. Yeah, nice stuff there. This little gal is by Pierre Auguste Renoir. Okay. Here's one maybe you can guess. Why don't you give that a shot? It's actually upside down. I, I couldn't say. Georgia O'Keeffe. Okay. Wisconsin's own, I think. Two flowers. They don't look anything like vaginas. This is Henri Rousseau. Mm. Right there. This one I know just by looking at it. This is Piet Mondrian. Oh, sure. That one. You can get this one. Uh, <laughs> it's not Picasso. <laughs> Art is not the man's strong suit. Monet. Okay. <laughs> I know you know this one. I know this one. The thinker. Uh, that's Michelangelo. <laughs> Rodin. Is it? Yes. Okay. Well, you got the thinker. From Godzilla. And this is that guy... You mentioned before? Oh, that's Picasso. It is, yeah. yeah. Three musicians. Okay. There we go. I like this one of the bears cuddling. That's, yeah, isn't that's isn't that great. nice? Yeah. yeah. Rousseau. It's called The Merry Jesters. Would you like to take that one home with you? I would be honored, Put yeah. It on your nightstand? Look oh, at it every night? Yeah, I can learn one artist, maybe. <laughs> when you go to our website, welcometothebasementshow.com, you can see all of our episodes. The entire back catalog is there for your enjoyment. And also, there are PayPal donation buttons that you can click on and make a one-time or rolling monthly donation to support this show. Rolling monthly donors are generous people, and I'm going to shout out some of them right now. Kevin, Wilson, Jay, Charles, Aaron, Dan, Mara, Alexander, David, Mario, Stephanie, Jonathan, Michael, Sabrina, Zach, Clayton, Jennifer, Eric, Anne, Peter, Mora, Andrea, and Andres. The rest of our rolling monthly donors later in the show. And now, viewer questions. Question from Alexander Forbes. What do you guys think of cameos in films? I just watched Glass Onion and found cameos in that excessive to the point of it becoming tasteless and cheap. One or two cameos can be fun, but when just about every speaking role is someone we're supposed to recognize, it starts feeling like celebrity worship. What are your thoughts uh, on that? Yeah, I, I tend to agree. It's a real tricky thing, right? Uh, the more you get into movies and films, the harder it is to keep that suspension of disbelief, right? Yeah. And to keep that immersion into the universe of the, of the movie. And a lot of times these cameos just throw you right out of it. The movie's winking at itself. Yeah. It's like, oh, you didn't expect to see this guy. It's, it's breaking the fourth wall. Sure. Uh, and for that reason, I I tend to agree. I, I don't like, especially in dramas. Game of Thrones had, uh, what's his name, the musician? The Ed Sheeran. Music. Yeah, Ed Sheeran on Game of Thrones. That was jarring. I saw that at the Orpheum. They, were, they did the premiere, the, the okay. season premiere at the Orpheum. And he came on, and I had no idea who he was. And this guy shows up, and everyone goes like, whoa! Yeah, what was the crowd response? And I, and I thought, am I supposed to know who that is? I don't know who this guy is. He looks like a hobbit. Yeah. Maybe that's what they're reacting to. I don't know. <laughs> Makers of the show did such a great job casting it with all uh, great actors who weren't necessarily big names. Mm -hmm. And then you throw in world famous, one of the biggest musicians of the time, Ed Sheeran. Yeah. It, it, it's jarring. The Knives Out movies, though, they, they really want to be outrageous and over the top. So it makes kind of sense in that to have these 
kind of goofy cameos show up and, and just overload on it. It's serious movies where it can get tricky, mm-hmm. like 12 Years a Slave, when suddenly Brad Pitt shows up. Mm. And I'm like, what's Brad Pitt doing there? <laughs> that's not that character. That's Brad Pitt. Yeah. And, and it's, it really takes you out of a, a movie that you don't want to be taken out of in that way. I missed you. I tried saying your name three times to make you appear, but it never worked. How's Denver? Denver's pretty cool. How the guys? Guys are great. Everybody says hi to you. Eddie's got a real drinking problem, but, you know, we don't need to get into that. That's Eddie. You know, bass player. I love you, Cap. I love you, too. I hope I don't die soon. Seeing that we're behind the devils again and again and again. Henry Rollins is a human pulsing vein. <laughs> Robbing. Just, if a single vein were personified, <laughs> it would be Henry Rollins. I gotta talk to you about something that's uh, really important. You know, son, the more you keep getting beat up in hockey and on the playground, the better my music goes. <laughs> that's right. I made a bargain with a leprechaun before you were born. <laughs> hey, Charlie, what do you got in there? Dead body? No, no, this body's still living. Just barely. Gabby. Yeah, the commercials taught me anything. He just needs to have some Campbell soup, and he'll be back to his normal that's, self. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Whoa. That's the coldest wedge you ever had. You've got no clothing down there to wedge, and nothing to wedge it in. <laughs> hey, I invented the backdoor escape. Okay, what's up? Is that a sex what? reference? <laughs> Just ask your mom, kid. <laughs> Quit following me. You're thirsty oh, AF. Right. Thirsty as frost. It's hot enough to melt the snowman. Although, you know. Sometimes snowmen deserve it. Sometimes they shouldn't exist in the first place, but through some crazy coincidence, they, they're they there. As you'll recall, my buddy Rob gave me this record as a gift. It's the co-star record where you act alongside Vincent Price. I listened to this whole thing, I acted along, and I recorded it all, and here are some more highlights from that experience. Check it out. We're in a western gambling hall. Mm. Vincent Price is playing Duke, a professional gambler. There are two co-starring roles in this scene. The first is Mike, the owner of the hall. The second is a beautiful woman, Pearl. Duke is raking in do the I, chips. Do I play both? Three queens, aces up. Mighty slick with the pasteboards, aren't you, mister? I'm afraid I didn't get your name. Call me Duke. Hi, right, Duke. Can we have a little talk in private? Okay. Well, wait till, mister. In there. My office. After hey. you. Uh, oh. Well, hello. I take it you know the young lady? Yeah, we met in New Orleans, wasn't it? Dodge That's City. That was Dodge City. Pleasure, man. My miss, if you please. Pardon me. Wondering why I invited you inside? Uh, I might have an idea. You're cheap, mister. Pure and simple. You're a card shop and you're not wanted in these parts. I'm a gambler. But I'm not a shop, as you put it. Never cheated or so. You took $1,400 from my men. I don't like it. Now I'll trouble you for the money. What for? Why should I? Because I say you should. You cheated my boys out of that money, and they're gonna, you're going give it, to give, give it back. I've killed men for less. I'll trouble you for your pistol, too. Listen, mister, whatever your name is. Mike. Mike Sloan. Mr. Sloan, in the first place, I do not carry a gun of any kind. You're welcome to search me. In the second place, I'm an honest gambler. Ask your lady friend. That's right, Mike. He's... Mr. the lady and mm. save yourself a peck of trouble. Well, you must know him pretty well, Miss yeah. Pearl. Then why is she the one who told me to bring you in here? That's the right answer. I couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you, Mike. Jake and Harry were fixing to kill him. I saw it do it, do, do it, though. At best against the game. He's too clever for... Right, I am. Mm. Maybe the lady prefers not to answer. There's something between you two. What is it? Nothing between us. Mike! No, Pearl. Not necessary. Yes, it is. He'd as leave kill you as look at you. You don't know, Duke, but Mike's the law in this town. You wouldn't stand a chance. But, Mr. Sloan, 
I'm preparing to leave. That's you might me. as well know that. With the money. No, no, Duke. You can't. You can't leave. Look who's joined the chorus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is that? What's the he to you anyway? What is this? What? No. He's what? Turn the page. He's my husband. You should never have said that. You seem to have made the big man angry. I'm not telling what he may do now. I might kill you. That's what I might do. No. no. Oh! What? Don't... Ah! Ah! He hurt. Bleeds a lot at first, but it's only a crease. You said you didn't carry a gun. No, I said I wasn't a cheater. I didn't say I wasn't a liar. Where are you going? Where else? To find another town, another game. I'll go with you. Not a chance. Better off here. Still a gambler and always will be. Bye, Pearl. Pleasure to have met you, Mike. <laughs> Mike Sloan, shot in the belly. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. Adam's now going to tell us who the rest of our rolling monthly donors are. Thank you to Amber, James, Katrine, Melanie, Alessio, Ella, Nathan, Trevor, Nicholas, Ashton, Emily, Mitchell, Adam, Ralph, Graham, Mike, Kempson, Patrick, Lars, and Evan. Cool, and now we've got one package to open. Let's crack it open and look at it. Let's get cracking. You want to open it up? I'm willing to open it up. You want this? No. You got it? If I'm opening this, I'm doing it with my bare hands. Bare hands. That's from Alexander in Andover, Massachusetts. There are a few items in here. I bet there are. All right. Virtuosity. Virtuosity. The back says, artificial intelligence, <laughs> genuine menace. <laughs> this is a, 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 a teenage Russell Crowe. He's very young in that. Wow, yeah, look that, at that is. Huh, that almost looks like a AI image of him. It does. What does it say at the bottom there? Justice needs a new program. <laughs> Oof. What's this one? Jesus Christ Superstar. I've never seen... Jesus Christ Superstar. I've listened to the soundtrack dozens of times. Same. I was a big fan of Jesus Christ Superstar when I was in college. I've never seen it on stage or on screen. One more. What could it be? We've got Bloodthirst. <laughs> what is this? Oh, my. The back says, the good, the bad, and the undead. Sure. Tara Reed. That's wow. a sure sign of quality. Yeah. Tara Reed. Costas Mendilor. Oh, man. Yeah, it's the old bloodthirst. We all get it. We all get it. Is it a vampire movie? It must be. With a name like Bloodthirst, it's got it. The good, the bad, and the undead. So it's like a vampire western? <laughs> sure, why not? If you had to watch all these back to back to back, what order would you put them in? Hmm. I think I would do Bloodthirst first. Blood first. Get it out of the way. And then virtuosity, and then we finish up mm. ascending to heaven with Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> There's a bit of a narrative arc throughout that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Adam, for joining me here in the you basement. Got it. Did you Thanks have a good time? Me. It was a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah. That's great. Uh, we remain friends. <laughs> <laughs> After Jack Frost, somehow. <laughs>